Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Todd Nielsen. Today we have a guest speaker from Michigan, Ambante Sankicha. Um, some of you may have seen him before. He's been here before. And um, he's going to give the talk today. So welcome, Bhante. All right. Thank you very much, Todd, uh, for the brief introduction. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm very glad to be here today uh, to share a short guided meditation and uh, some Dhamma with you. Uh, so let's begin uh, our practice uh, with a short guided meditation. All right. Maintaining the proper posture with upright body and gently closing your eyes. Understanding your posture the way you are seated Appreciating this very moment, being very happy about this moment, your spiritual practice, your Dhamma practice, as one of the best things you can give to yourself. We are going to spend some time to relax our body and calm the mind to purify the mind from defilements and other hindrances. To understand ourselves better. With this appreciative joy, this happy mind, take a few deep breaths some long, mindful and gentle breaths, releasing any tension and negative energies from the body. Experiencing the each breath throughout the body you may bring your complete attention to your inner experience, to your body and mind. So take a few deep breaths, filling your entire lungs, holding the breath for a couple of seconds, and release it mindfully and peacefully and relax. Feel the presence of yourself in this peaceful atmosphere. Feel the peacefulness and the silence around you.
as you maintain a very still and a relaxed posture, you may take some time to scan through your body, gently touching each and every single part of the body with the mind, observing even the subtle sensations and feelings through the deep stillness, just to see how you feel your body at this moment, if it is relaxed, if it is peaceful, or even if it is restless. Observing as it is, and see if you can completely let go of all the thoughts past memories and other mental images from the mind, allowing yourself to be here and now in the present moment. Limiting your mind just to your psychophysical entity. Just by letting it be, letting it be without much effort. You are just listening to your body with an empty mind being very kind and gentle to yourself. Letting go of the past, letting go of the future. Feeling the deep sense of connectedness with yourself, with your body and mind. And do not forget to have a slight compassionate smile in your face. And remember, when you smile from your own heart, you generate lots of positive energies. And let these positive energies and vibrations illuminate your inner experience.
Now, with this relaxed body and calm mind, understanding the breathing process as you breathe in and out through the nostrils, You may observe each and every single incoming and outgoing breath mindfully. When you breathe in, simply being aware that you are breathing in. When you breathe out, being aware that you are breathing out. See for how long you can be just with the present breath without getting distracted. Once you feel the natural breath, let the natural breathing process take place. You are observing the natural incoming and outgoing breath with present moment, silent awareness, relaxing your body and calming the mind with each breath, letting go of the past, letting go of the future, Keeping the mind always in the present moment with the help of natural breath. Simply understanding how your body and mind become free from tension, stress and anxieties. As you always maintain the present moment awareness on each breath. Breathing in, breathing out. Even understanding and acknowledging your direct responsibility in maintaining this peaceful state of mind, these healthy states of being,
as human beings, we all have this potential to discipline and control ourselves. If we guide us in the right direction, And now, as we experience this spiritual happiness, physical and mental well-being, let's share all these positive feelings now with all living beings in the world, in the universe, as our loving kindness and compassion, letting your love go to all beings in all directions, including all of us who are here now, wishing them may all beings be well, may all beings be happy, May all beings be relaxed. May all beings be peaceful. Broadening your heart and broadening your mind. Feeling the deep sense of connection with all beings. May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be relaxed. May all beings be peaceful. Okay, now turning back to yourself, taking a few deep inhalations and exhalations, refreshing your body and mind, understanding the posture, You may open your eyes. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Um, I think uh, we can skip the chanting today. <laughs> okay. All right. I hope you all enjoyed the peaceful meditation session. <clears throat> so, after the meditation, I was uh, asked to do a short Dhamma talk on 
a very special topic today. Uh, I know it is not a new topic to all of you, uh, because from time to time uh, we talk about this topic uh, as it is very much connected to the teachings, uh, our spirituality, and our everyday life, which is the karma, <laughs> right? The magical word. Uh, in fact, it is uh, a broad topic, uh, complex topic. Uh, there are a lot to understand, uh, but here we will focus just on uh, its practical aspect and uh, how it can be connected to uh, our practice and uh, how it would be beneficial for us. Okay. Uh, simply, the word karma means the actions, right? Actions. Uh, we always perform actions, okay? And as human beings, uh, in one way, we all are uh, the products of karma, okay? Uh, we all are products of karmas. Uh, as we always perform uh, the karmas then, the actions always. And uh, <clears throat> when we think about our everyday life, uh, life, our body, this physical appearance, physical manifestations, uh, is the most outer level of our experience. And we know it is just like a computer, a machine, uh, different informations, uh, and different data uh, being stored in this machine. So according to this software or the data, this physical body as a machine, it just functions. Mm. And uh, the important thing there is that uh, we experience some uh, different levels, different states within this process. Mm as we can understand. So, the important thing to understand here, this data or the information uh, given to this machine is actually directly from ourselves, not someone else mainly. Uh, within this lifetime, uh, as it is explained in the Dhamma, uh, mostly the information, the data uh, we have been given to this machine even from uh, the lives before this life for a long, long time, right? So, from time to time we go through different experiences because of the information or the data uh, that we have stored in the system. This is how the uh, karma, karmic force uh, is functioning, okay? So, when we learn about the karma, it mostly comes to our head mostly come to our mind, oh, it is just a theory, it's just a teaching, uh, or oh, if it is uh, even uh, a belief system, you know. But very interestingly, the karma is a very active experience. It is always taking place, it's always uh, functioning even right now. Hmm? So it's very uh, alive as we can see. And uh, it has, uh, even though it has a very personal aspect to it, uh, this karma, when it comes to our everyday life experience, uh, our karmic forces, karmic consequences are even interacting with each other. Right? That's why uh, when you talk about our relationships, these are also mostly determined in our life due to our past karmas. <laughs> we happen to lose certain individuals because of our karma. We have that experience, for better or worse. <laughs> right? For better or worse, we happen to live and experience and share our life with others, our partners, family members, friends and others, maybe neighbors even, <laughs> because of our own karma, you know. Therefore, 
the, it's very interesting, very important to understand. You know, when it comes to uh, our personal life and experience, uh, if you know the theory of karma, uh, if you know how it works, how it influences our life, our physical and mental well-being, I think it's a great asset for you. It can be very enlightening, very practical, very beneficial to you. Okay. So, in understanding uh, these things, uh, we have to focus on a couple of areas. Uh, uh, what these karmas, or where they occur uh, in this process? Hmm? Our karmic uh, experience, or if they are the actions uh, that we perform, they are always uh, processed within this body and mind. It's very important to understand that. Okay, As we communicate with the external world through our senses, uh, eventually all these things are going through our brain, our nervous system, our past memories and everything. Uh, there are perceptions. There are ways that we uh, process this information eventually in our brain. Uh, or you may call it the mind, eventually, right? Uh, according to our past experiences, uh, the way we understand them, interpret them, uh, we create certain ways of reacting to them, right? If these informations uh, in our brain appear to be pleasant, enjoyable, joyful, we get attached to them, we crave for them, right? Uh, so we emotionally get attached to them. And if they are not pleasant, if they are unpleasant, painful, uh, not joyful, we hate them. We want to get rid of them, we want to run away from them. Mostly with our past experiences, right? And there are also certain emotions are uh, created in our brain. It's actually set ourselves in actions. Or you may call it the reaction. There's always a reaction in our experience to what we process in our brain. Okay, And we know that part biologically, <clears throat> how it is happening. When hormones uh, are released according to our emotions in our brain, in amygdala, uh, our brain secretes certain hormones into our blood system, bloodstream. And bloodstream uh, carries this message uh, throughout the body. This is how these emotions uh, set ourselves in uh, the flight or fight mode. Uh, reaction levels. So when we react to our emotions, actually, these actions become the karma. This is exactly where the karmas are taking place. So basically you can understand then the emotional reaction to our perceptions. What we experience in our system becomes the karma. Okay, this is very important to understand. So the nature of uh, this phenomenon, therefore, uh, produces certain uh, consequence. They always create uh, consequences accordingly. If it is a negative reaction, they create uh, negative consequences. If you act or speak out of evil intention, negative intention, that produces a negative consequence for you. If you react to uh, these perceptions, what you experience inside, according to uh, positive emotions, uh, positive feelings, the happiness uh, and peace will follow. So this is the basic theory. 
right? Uh, to simply say it, every action has an equal reaction to it. So it comes when it comes to our human experience, it also works the same. It is same. So this is where it takes place. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is an ongoing process then. According to the Buddha's teachings, we are products of the karma, our own karma. In one place, uh, Buddha explains that, Kamma uh, if there's anything to say that belongs to you <laughs> in this world, in your life, it is your own karma actually, what you have done. Hmm? It is the karma. To claim anything in this world, in this universe, to be yourself, it is the karma. <laughs> you know. And karma daya though, your karma becomes your inheritance. You carry it always with you. Wherever you go, whatever you do, you always carry your karmic consequences. So it becomes your inheritance. Uh, and karma yoni, it becomes the birthplace for you. So this is a very interesting point, actually. Uh, when you understand the theory of karma and how it works, according to the Buddhist teachings, it goes beyond this life. You know, uh, according to that explanation by the Buddha, we are the travelers through this existence because of our karma. It becomes very complex and beautiful when it comes to uh, the special teachings of the Buddha on the karma and rebirth. You know, how the rebirth process is explained is mainly uh, with the theory of karma. Okay. So we are born as human beings because of our own karma. And this human life is considered a higher level of these uh, different realms of existence. Hmm? We have done a lot of good karmas in our past lives. That's why we are born as human beings. So different beings are born uh, due to their own karmas. As animals, hungry ghosts, uh, divine beings, uh, to be born in hells, uh, all these things are determined by individual's own karma, not someone else's wish. This is how uh, Buddha explains it, by seeing how these things happen with his own mind. You know. Uh, so therefore, when you understand it, uh, when you understand the rebirth, how it takes place, it's very easy to understand when you understand the theory of karma how it works. Uh, that's why it is said that your karma becomes your birthplace. So we are born as human beings and where you are going to be born again after you die is determined by your karmas that you are performing in this very lifetime. So there comes the most important point to understand. So who is deciding it then? You. It's our responsibility, therefore. Uh, if you live a good life, better life, uh, spiritual life with a better understanding, you will be born as a uh, human being, divine being, in this advanced level of this existence. And it is the same with opposite. Hmm. So the karma becomes your birthplace. And karma bandhu, the karma is your real relatives. Karma is your real, uh, true relatives, actually. You know, uh, it is clearly explained in one place in the Dhamma, actually. It comes to my mind now. <clears throat> you know, when you go to uh, a foreign country, okay, uh, having no clue where to go, what to do, you know, mostly, uh, but if you know that there is at least one friend for you in that country, how you feel, <laughs> right? 
this friend, this friend would come to the airport even to pick you up, welcome you, warmly welcome you. What is your feeling, right? If there's no one like that, how helpless you are, how desperate you are going to be there. Hmm? Uncertain even, uh, you're going to be there. So Buddha says, if you have done a lot of good karmas in your life, it is like having that only one friend waiting <laughs> in that airport to welcome you warmly, you know. But if you haven't done anything good, positive karmas, uh, wholesome karmas in this your life, in this very lifetime, when you are going to be born again, you are going to be in a big problem <laughs> with such an uncertainty. Uh, insecurity, confusion, frustrations, disappointments and everything, you know. That is to uh, understand, as I explained earlier, this way it becomes a big asset for you when you understand the theory of karma and how it works, okay. Uh, and karma patisarano, your own karma becomes the refuge for you then. You know, if you understand it, if you guide yourself in the right direction, it becomes your refuge, you know. And it becomes very broad, actually, when you understand uh, the circle of birth and death, how it works, you know. And very importantly, to understand how it works now, as I mentioned earlier. I mentioned that it's an ongoing thing, it's very active even now, the karma and its reaction. You know, just to understand that very easily, you know, when you are angry, right, when you are angry, uh, if you are angry at this very moment, how you feel? How you feel it in yourself, in your body, in your mind, in your emotional level, how you feel it? Hmm? Are you peaceful? <laughs> are you restful? Hmm? Are you comfortable? No, it is like you are burning in a hell. That's how we feel when we are angry. And it is same with all negative emotions. You know, we are totally being disturbed by these emotions. So we can see that immediate reaction to our own karma, our reactions. So these reactions are, uh, explain in three ways. We react to our negative emotions through our physical actions. Kaya hmm? karma, the physical actions. We hit someone, we disturb someone using our body, you know, in our actions. And of course we reaction to our negative emotions through our words, verbal actions. Hmm? And this is how uh, the karmic reactions are uh, mainly explained. But going beyond that, uh, in the Buddhist teachings it is explained uh, as mental karmas too. Mm -hmm. To be very subtle, uh, sometimes we react to our emotions through our thoughts and creating more emotions, thoughts. We replicate thoughts according to uh, our negative emotions. And they can be very powerful too. Huh? But we don't really worry about that part. Why? <laughs> Nobody can see it. <laughs> right? What we think, whatever is going on in our mind, nobody can see it. But we see that. We know that. Right? So, uh, our heart knows everything. What we think, mostly. Uh, what is going on in our mind. Our mental reaction. Therefore, there's no escape <laughs> for mental karmas too, you know. Uh, so this is also very important to understand. There are three ways of performing karmas. They can uh, produce uh, consequences accordingly. Okay, And when uh, they come to uh, experiential level, when these karmas uh, influence us, with their karmic consequences, 
there's a big uh, classification on to that depending on the intensity of our karma depending on how powerful uh, our uh, emotional reaction to them mm-hmm. so there are karmas uh, that directly influence you uh, that directly affect you in this very lifetime so just like uh, the experience i explained earlier when you get angry you feel it right there you experience it you are being disturbed already you don't have to wait to next life it's already there right if you do certain thing if you say something to someone mostly you get the consequence maybe very immediately you know within a, uh, i mean on the same day a couple of days later or this lifetime you know there are uh, karma and uh, karmic reactions like that so there are certain karmas uh, that are going to affect you in this very lifetime okay but i think that is the most practical level to see you know how it happens to us uh, so many people have that understanding now you know even though uh, before it was like very spiritual very religious but many people our general audience actually society they have come to understand this you know many people say that that's my karma that's my karma they know that if they something if they do something <laughs> bad they're going to come back to them right we call them the boomerang uh, action or the reaction you know what you throw out will, will come back to you either way positive or negative so it's a common general understanding today what you do what you put out there really matters to you right it's no longer a secret or highly spiritual thing it's the practical understanding nowadays people know how it works right that is because of their direct experience in there you know as they interact with people relationship maybe workplace uh, family members and others right and uh, mostly people are talking about what happens in the nature even today many people would try to explain that uh, as something directly connected to human behavior as human beings uh, are declining in a way you know having no respect to each other no any appreciation of the nature what they do how they live their life how they behave right so there's a certain way that nature reacts to this human behavior so that way it becomes very complex you know what we do what we speak what we think in our mind even when it becomes to a collective experience like the global level that can really affect the nature it is explained in the dhamma it becomes a powerful force then you know uh to explain that in a very uh, experiential level you know there are some places there are some houses even when you go there you feel some welcoming feeling you want to be there you want to stay some longer there right i think we all have that experience and sometimes when you enter some places <laughs> you can't wait to leave that place <laughs> you want to go away you know some negative feelings sometimes so that can be directly connected to the individuals people live there you know how they live in that house that space how they behave what kind of things that they value appreciate how they communicate with each other uh, all these vibrations actually can really change the environment that atmosphere so very practical thing when you come to this place how you feel <laughs> right these positive vibrations positive energies right that is directly connected to our karma what we do in our mind in our speech in our actions 
So through, through this experiential level, actually, we have come to understand this point, uh, this theory of karma, how it works, how it is directly connected to our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. You know, so uh, this karma, therefore, is a very practical, ongoing thing. You know, uh, even though we don't see it. Even though you are not aware of them, it's happening always. So karma is very complexly connected to ourselves. Uh, And there are karmas that will affect you directly right after you die. Right? Explained in the Dhamma, like if you kill your mother or father, uh, uh, an enlightened being, if you harm the Buddha, uh, if you do something bad for the spiritual community kind of thing, these karmas are going to be very powerful, very powerful. When it comes to this spiritual level, they are going to be affecting you right after you die, in a negative level, very bad, very powerful. And there are karmas that will affect you throughout this existence until you attain enlightenment, until you become free from this birth or end death circle. So these are some classifications of the karma and their reactions, depending on their intensity. And the most important thing to keep in mind, this karma is only one theory, one condition that explains how things happen in our life. It's only one factor, but very important, very important, that will decide so many things in our life, how and what happens to us. So therefore, as human beings, Buddha explained that we can control the karma. We can control the karma. If we understand this theory, how it works, and as I said, where it works, right? we can influence it. We can directly control that. Especially, where this is done is actually in our brain in that process, as I explained earlier. The exact point to control that actually. When these informations are going through our brain, there are two sensory pathways. One goes directly through our amygdala. Uh, Getting this emotional experience involved and then direct our reaction accordingly. But we can divert that. We can divert that signal, that sensory process in our brain Bypassing the amygdala to go through the uh, cortex, frontal lobe, that we direct our signal ways to analyze it properly, wisely, intellectually. That is what we call the reasoning. Uh, What magically happens there is the real application of the mindful awareness. So know that. Technically what you are doing by practicing mindfulness meditation is that you avoid that emotional level getting involved on our way. We try to guide this process to go through our reasoning, our thinking brain, and we guide ourselves accordingly. So this is exactly how Buddha explained the theory of karma, the theory of birth, rebirth, all these things were there even before Buddha coming. This is but what Buddha really realized. How to control the karma and possibly how to get rid of the process of karma even. Avoiding these negative uh, emotions. Hmm? So if you do not produce these negative emotions, even the positive emotions are impossible there. It's a question for you to think about. Because emotions are always blind, positive or negative. According to Buddhism, there are no positive or negative emotions. The positive emotions are explained as highly evolved mental states. They are no longer emotions. Because emotions are always out of your control. They are controlling you. But in the spiritual level, there are no positive emotions. They are highly spiritual states or qualities of mind, like love, loving kindness. Right? So, Buddha spoke about how to control this. 
take the control of this process and even possibly get rid of all the karmas. And this is, that is how Buddha said even to get rid of the suffering of this existence. Because we are going to be born again because of creating our own karmas. So Buddha discovered how to end this process. Not to create any karma, but to be at peace always. Without getting into this emotional level and create any karma. So we can influence, we can control our karma and their reaction. And this is uh, what Buddha discovered. And it is possible for anyone. It is possible for anyone if you really use this proper mindfulness technique or the introspection. The human beings are, only human beings are gifted with that. Only human beings can watch their emotions, uh, witness their emotions, control their emotions before reacting to them. So we need to encourage that practice, that level of awareness in our practice and guide ourselves in the right direction. So the positive karmas are helpful us, uh, helpful to us to live a peaceful, happy, spiritual life. You know, ending of all the karma is a different story. You know, getting into a deeper levels, but to live a harmonious life, peaceful, happy life, we need to learn how to uh, perform good karmas, positive karmas, wholesome karmas. They are good for you, they are good for others. That is the way to live a happy life. Okay, So these are some essential information for you about the karma. Uh, so for the time given, <laughs> this is what I can share with you for now. Uh, I can take any, maybe one question. <laughs> 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 if you have any. Yes. So, in talking about the karma that you create as an individual, I assume it's connected to those people around you. Mm -hmm. For example, who would choose to be born yes. to you. Yes. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and your karma, also the other person's karma as well. They choose to come to you because of their own karma too. That's why it is very complicated actually, you know, in understanding. And we should never forget that we perform karmas collectively too. Like two people coming together and do one action. So they share the same consequence together. You know, it happens that way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think. So sorry about the time. And uh, thank you very much for being here. And uh, all the blessings to you. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Hi. Hello, hello. hello? <laughs> right. Need the mic or oh, no? Wow. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Look at the kids. <laughs> wow, awesome. So, um, we just had a great time today, you probably heard. And we did some, a number of things. We did crafts and we did uh, uh, meditation where we actually sat and we were crisscross applesauce. We talked about who Buddha was, and we sat like Buddha, and we felt how that felt. And we had a lot of interesting responses. We had that Buddha was a teacher. We had that Buddha was a prince. What did it feel like to feel like a prince at one time? 
What did it feel like to be someone that loves everybody, including the bugs? <laughs> and then we did something that we're going to really share with you because it's easier to show you than to talk about it. So we're talking about sloth arm. Thanks a million, Buddha kids. We can leave now, and uh, we get to play downstairs. Thanks, everybody. Woo!